Hello everyone, my name is Marco and in this video I'm going to show you some tricks that I've learned and came up with using texture scrolling and UV manipulation. Texture scrolling is a very simple and cheap method for adding animation to your textures. Simply put, using a script or a shader you can make a texture move on the surface of the object. This can create the illusion of motion in an object that might be forcibly static. And while a script might work fine, a shader allows for more possibilities. In this example, I've created a shader using the awesome Amplify Shader Editor in which I have a texture scrolling setup. I have a Vector2 node that plugs into a panner, and that plugs into the main texture along with a UV coordinates node. If I set the Vector2 to a property, that means I can change the speed at which the texture scrolls in both Y and X axes. If you want, you can even add a second texture map and blend between the two for more detail. If you change the textures, you might end up with some really cool effects. And if you're really feeling up for it, you can use the old Blizzard trick of multiplying a couple of textures and make some really simple yet very effective texture blending visuals. And for the texture panning part, that's actually all there is to it. The potential of this technique actually comes in when you mix it up with UV manipulation. Simply put again, the UVs represent where your texture is displayed on the surface of the model. If you change the position of the UVs, you change the position of the texture on the model, but you don't change the model itself. You can also deform UVs to create some interesting scaling effects. A smaller UV cluster scrolling across a big texture will provide a higher sense of speed. So let's start with the basic, a moving water texture. In this example, the UVs of these both planes are laid out correctly as they were when they were created. And when you scroll the UVs up or down on the texture, you get this very flat screen moving across. In this example, what we've done is, without changing the geometry of the objects, we edited the UVs so that they look kind of erratic and out of place. When we move these UVs, the texture becomes more animated because it has to bend across some of the vertices because of the deformation that we added, creating a much more interesting and animated effect. And in this final example, the idea is to take the UVs and compress them horizontally so that they are really narrow, taking up only a few pixels in the texture. And when you scroll, you get this effect that looks a bit more like a cascade of water or maybe some force field effect, which is also interesting. In this other example, you can see how the texture of water is simulating a cascade. But if you take the texture and move it, you can see that the vertical bit is moving pretty much at the same speed as the horizontal bit. So to fix that, we can make the UVs a little bit more interesting by taking this whole surface and actually reducing its texture size to much less than it should be. Now when the texture scrolls, the vertical bit seems to move way faster, making it an effect much more realistic. And there's also the deformation and actually breakup of the UV space. In this case, some of these vertices were broken up so that the texture now becomes deformed, but as well you can see it pushing away, simulating that the water would be pushing, for example, away from some rocks in the river just by creating those effects of, of uh, whirlpools. And while the compression method might look wasteful when it comes to texture space, it actually is quite handy because it allows you to animate using an image. And in this case, I've created a simple set of traffic lights where we'll change light just because I'm scrolling the texture across it from green to yellow to red. Another trick that I came up with was having the compression on the texture and separate through planes by scrolling across a transparent texture to create this effect of God rays or just like poking through foliage which is quite cheap to achieve and is fully 3D. In these two examples, the big difference is the usage of the UV space. On the top one, you can see that the image was applied directly without any form of changes, and so what you get is basically a marquee going across the mesh. But in the bottom one, we change the UVs so that each different plane is actually broken up disorganized and flattened. So when you move, you get this effect of sound bars going up and down because each of the planes is just getting a fraction of the texture. 
In this example, texture compression and a tailor-made image can suggest the loads of displays blinking and having waves go through it and changing intensity, as for example, the red changing intensity, the black screen blinking gradually, as well as the bottom blue one having a wave go through it. These three represent the top ones and are actually a representation of intervals. You can have the blue screen blink more often than the green screen, which blinks more often than the red screen. In this case, we can see how using the same texture, we can get different results by manipulating the UVs. In the top model, you can see a screen, supposedly, which was supposed to be glowing, and I want the edges to be darker than the center bit. With this, only using compression, all I get is the gradient's intensity changing because it's going through the texture. But if I manipulate the position of the vertices on the UVs, I can get all the bright vertices to be on the top bit of the texture and the dark vertices to be on the bottom one, getting the pulse effect coming radiating from the center, actually creating this pulsing effect. The same thing happens in the sphere, which is using a different texture which is basically a pulsating gradient as well. But I want the highlight of the sphere to stay in this position. And that's why it's important to actually compress all the vertices and create the texture accordingly. Now I can have a blinking light bulb without having to change the texture to anything too complex. This example is the top of a cylinder, which had its UVs manipulated and broken apart into different strips. That way, by having just one single glowing strip, I can move all the UVs across and get this radar effect, creating this radial animation without having to rotate the object should it be a static mesh in the game world. I use the same trick here to simulate a vinyl spinning on a turntable. Remember, this is all texture scrolling. I don't have to animate anything. I can just plug this into the shader and it'll animate on itself. This is a more extreme example of UV manipulation and scrolling. Combining a texture that already has waviness with some UVs that have been manipulated, I can create this effect of a flag that is constantly waving without having to have a sprite sheet or an actual 3D model with uh, physics. Here you can see the original texture and how the UVs at the end were actually broken apart so that that spot of the mesh hardly ever gets any flag texture, making it look like it's tapering off into the end. And if you take the time to plan, you can actually create a texture that represents programming. In this case, we have one of those crystal dials. By scrolling the texture, I can get the different numbers from 1 to 0 to actually scroll through and create a sequence of numbers. This might be an overcomplication. It's something that's probably easy to just make text, but it's a fun little thing to do, and maybe it can be useful in some situations. This is one of my favorite effects. If you ever played a racing game, you can see those arrows on the side, and I thought of a simplified way of making those arrows animate. And this is by having this sort of glow texture and making sure that UVs actually create a, an arrow of sorts in their own mesh. And by moving the texture up, you can kind of have those arrows gradually point in the direction that you want the turn to be. And those are my tricks using texture scrolling and UV manipulation. I hope you guys enjoyed this and that you learned something from it. Take care.